thanks for joining. Hopefully this will be a very um, insightful conversation um, for you, get, perhaps and hopefully providing some um, some actionable um, advice as, as we go forward. So again, the topic of today, uh, it's a roundtable, CIO roundtable discussion with uh, both uh, uh, colleagues, CIO colleagues uh, of yours or peers, as well as um, some representatives from the technology industry uh, itself. And it's about predicting and preparing for the new normal, achieving growth through uh, adversity. And this has been a subject that uh, we all in, in all industries have really been focusing on um, this year because of all that has happened and all that will be continuing to happen as we move into 2021. So yes, let me introduce the uh, the, the panel members. Um, we'll start with Steve Perez. Uh, he's a partner at Bain Consultancy. Uh, we have Adhir Matu, who's Chief Information Officer at uh, Marvell Semiconductor. We have Ron Abreu, who's Global IT Director at SWM International, which if you look it up, their website is a company that has roots back to the Renaissance. It's quite interesting. Uh, and uh, Pathmao uh, Guna Wardana, who is uh, joining us. Uh, he's the head of the Americas operation for Tata Communications. Uh, and finally, Kevin Deerling, who's uh, SVP at NVIDIA. <clears throat> so thank you everybody for, for joining and we'll, we'll uh, jump right in. So I'm the head of research at uh, Global Data. Uh, however, I'm specifically head of research in our technology and telecom area. Global Data actually is a company that uh, has um, equivalent uh, business information and market advisory services in 17 other vertical industries. So what we've been doing throughout the year is looking at how this, um, this crisis and the resultant um, economic impact uh, has impact, uh, impacted businesses of all sorts across all of these vertical industries. And then clearly there's an intersection with the uh, with technology, which is what uh, my group looks at. So we'll first talk with industry context. Uh, we'll second, second a brief mention about the role of technology and telecom and what's happened. And then we'll talk a bit about the um, enterprise sentiment, uh, about what, uh, what the impact has been and what they're going to do Going, going forward. Even though everyone talked about the potential global, uh, Bill Gates and others talked about global pandemic, um, there were very uh, few enterprises or businesses uh, or governments uh, that were prepared for what, what, what has happened. We, we could take a look at what, how the, um, the COVID-19 impacted industries in different ways. It was not uniform. There were certain uh, industries that actually uh, 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 performed fairly well um, in the, uh, uh, you know, uh, d during the year. Uh, but of course, as we all know, there were other industries uh, that did not or could not fare well, no matter how well they, they strategize. So you look at industries like um, the automotive industry, the technology industry, and some others, even, even retail to a certain degree, um, there, if you look at the stock market's reaction to them and their future prospects, it's actually quite quite positive. There have been in increases, and again, this is this is a, a, a this is our global data um, uh, equities indices. We're looking at we're looking at how the stock markets think uh, their what what the prospects are are, are going forward. But then others, um, insurance. Uh, you look at uh, con the construction industry, travel and tourism and oil and gas, it's much more uh, pessimistic. The point being here is that uh, the pandemic has not affected uh, all companies in the same exact way. There's decision-making points and thought processes uh, differed uh, within all of these different vertical industries. And indeed within sub-segments within uh, the vertical industries uh, themselves. So moving on, let's look at it in a different way. Okay, this is uh, looks at um, uh, M and A volumes um, throughout uh, throughout 2020, and uh, this is uh, more an indication 
of what's happening now or what the, what the mindset uh, was um, in, the, in, the, in the moment. Uh, and it fell off the cliff, okay? So uh, the, where stock indices are about the future or future expectations, uh, the, um, this is about how investments uh, were made or not made and how um, decisions were reprioritized. And I think we all have observed that that was um, what that was going on, um, you know, very, very uh, uh, heavily uh, throughout the year. Reprioritizations of strategies of investments uh, were required everywhere throughout every industry, uh, as we're seeing. There were not uh, M and A's. This was halted. We expect this to to really rebound in 2021, and there might be. Um, some bargains out there uh, moving into 2021. So we expect it to rebound, but this was the case this, this year. Um, so everybody in all industries we're, we're talk, was talking this year about this concept of resiliency, about surviving and then thriving going forward. The posture that businesses um, took or, or are taking um, depends First of all, on their economic uh, standing, you know there are some industries that are completely upside down, and no matter how uh, how confident they are, how brave they they are, it's it's not a, a possible for them to invest in a downturn. I mean, confidence is the other um, big, big big factor here in this sort of survive and thrive strategy. You know, this idea of investing out of a downturn or batten down the hatches being the choices, uh, the, both are legitimate strategies. Uh, and this is what companies were faced with this, this, um, the, the, this past year. And indeed, go, still going into 2021. So moving forward, the, I'll just, a quick word about our industry, um, the tech and telecom industry. Um, it, it, it's it's not hyperbole to say that it has performed heroically during the COVID nineteen crisis. Uh, it did so and continues to do so alongside healthcare and emergency services and all the other key worker areas. You know the the whole world, uh, much of the world already knew how important these technologies were to our lives, but uh, but it really brought home, you know, how uh, important these technologies are to us. And indeed, uh, you, you know, really. After some initial expectations of a complete collapse, none of that happened, and it really worked out very well. So uh, it's quite quite a proud year to be in this industry. So moving on, so let's talk about the uh, enterprise um, um, sentiment for for a second. This is based on observations we've made via our research of our of all the enterprises that that, that we work with. Um, this decision making about you know, what do you do in a downturn? Um, you know, invest out of a downturn, batten down the hatches or somewhere uh, somewhere in between. This extends to uh, technology investment strategies. Um, you know, digitization has been well understood, you know, over the past year and, and few months that digitization um, uh, really is essential for survival. Where, you know, you look at retail, the companies that were um, that were already uh, well down the digital path with their how they interacted with customers uh, are doing quite well, you know. Um, but then customers who really relied on bricks and mortar and or the high street, as I call it here in the UK where I live, um, are failing miserably. Uh, and so this this idea of, of uh, accelerating your your digital motion as as a business, no matter what business you're in you know, really, really hit home. Um, and that's not just for supporting customers in terms of a sales and customer support uh, action, but also your staff, um, the uh, how to handle these suddenly remote workers and keep the business ticking over, keeping everybody motivated um, and keeping the engine and going. Um, now, all that said, there was tremendous efforts in, in that during this year. Uh, but longer term projects, maybe software transformation projects, or maybe some, you know, some uh, migration strategies from old systems to new systems and, and maybe some network upgrades and, and all that. Well, they were definitely put on hold. You know, the IT services segments was, was one of the worst hit within the tech, the tech sector, sector. So 
Um, all of that's true. So as we, um, and, and just a quick point here, I just got off our own webinar <laughs> that we did, uh, that we did today for our clients. Uh, and, you know, this is a really key point you're going into 2021 is that it's way too early to talk about the post COVID-19 market. What's it going to look like? It's still very much a matter of COVID-19 coexistence. So, um, and that, that's just a fact. So moving forward, and this is a bit about our study of surveys. We do uh, massive surveys every year of our enterprise client base, everything like that. This particular one was about 4,200 enterprises uh, worldwide. And we happened to do it um, at, at a time when, we, when we, we could actually capture sentiment about what is the impact of COVID-19 on your thinking about how you're going to spend your, your money. This is of IT or technology decision makers, not just IT departments, but also other departments like CMOs, et cetera. And, um, and the interesting thing is that what we saw turned out to be the case, which was uh, while a, a large percentage um, thought that their uh, revenues as a business were gonna decrease by more than 20, 20%, um, a lower number, only about less than 20% or so, expected their IT budget to decrease by, by that amount. Um, and then if you look at the other faces by decrease slightly or relatively flat, all that is more or less the same. So we were already able to see that even though uh, there was great concern about the economic outlook of the business, there was not an expectation that they weren't gonna spend money on technology. And that really has turned out to be the case. So moving forward, what are some of the areas where there was, I talked about reprioritization and how that was um, a major activity for, for most businesses and most IT departments, obviously. Uh, so it was pretty clear. We, we sort of asked questions about what did you spend less on or what are you planning to spend less on and what are you planning to spend more on? And, uh, you know, the big increases were in the areas you would probably expect. Mobility, cloud computing, uh, communications and collaborations, obviously, and security. Um, you know, these were areas um, that were deemed a, a, a essential uh, for surviving and thriving going forward. And that's where you saw the increase. Decreases were again in those things that were more sort of project-based and maybe longer term um, that could have been, that can be sidelined for a little while, like application development, um, uh, consulting services, et cetera. So, uh, so it was uh, quite interesting to, to observe. My final point uh, is really about disruptive technology. So one of the theories was that as companies reprioritized and thought about where they were going to spend their money was that one of the most obvious important things to do was to improve operational efficiency. So make the business processes work better, um, cut costs, allow for um, less human intervention, in processes, so forth and so on, depending on the industry. And indeed, we did find um, that there was an increased um, a, a interest in terms of uh, investment thoughts or priorities around things like AI, machine learning, automation, IoT, so forth and, and so on, which at the end of the day, all stands a reason. And we'll see if these areas explode in 2021 as, as many expect they, 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 they might. Uh, going forward. So with that, I'm going to wrap up my comments and move to our, to our panel. So the first area, I'm going to look at, we're going to uh, structure this conversation around three main themes, investment strategies, what the thinking is about that, and some ideas uh, about that. Uh, then we'll move to technology priorities and talk, talk about that. And then we'll wrap up by looking at longer term strategic shifts. What about is happening now? What do we expect <clears throat> to become permanent um, going forward? <clears throat> so, Ed here, I'd like to start with you. Um, if you don't mind sharing with us, how did Marvell um, Semiconductor go about the survive and thrive decision making process? How, how was the company impacted and what was its what was its thinking as it as it thought about it, its 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 uh, investments going forward? Sure, uh, thank you, Jerry. Thanks for the question. So yeah, so uh, 
At Marvel, uh, basically, um, just to give you some context on the background, we, we are a semiconductor solutions company and we design and develop uh, semiconductor solutions which are used in data center, uh, enterprise, uh, automotive, and carrier like 5G. So this technology company, you know, we, this technology kind of comes naturally to us. And luckily for the last uh, three, four years, we had been on this transformational journey where we had been investing in IT already in many of the key areas. Now, as, as COVID uh, hit, uh, some of the things that we started uh, paying more attention, uh, obviously, was employee health and safety. So that, that comes first. So working closely with our facilities and HR teams, we, we wanted to ensure that that was taken care of. That was on top of our mind as the highest priority. So we did a few investments in those areas, you know, ensuring that we're following the local health advisories, regulations, and so forth and also contributed to the local community causes uh, actually globally. Then the other key thing for us was to ensure that our employees are uh, you know, um, collaborating with each other, able to work, uh, do their day-to-day -day jobs, uh, not only operational work, but also the key initiatives that, uh, that we had. So, so in that sense, uh, as I mentioned, we had been investing already in the, some of the collaboration tools and productivity tools, but we, we kind of accelerated uh, some areas, uh, you know, for example, network bandwidth, uh, we accelerated the rollout of uh, chat uh, platform uh, and so forth. So that, that was to ensure that everybody feels connected uh, closely and, able, and, and, and is able to work uh, closely and efficiently together. Then uh, traditionally, as you know, you know, IT uh, from an IT standpoint, we enable the growth of the business. So there have been, uh, you know, strategic initiatives. In fact, we recently announced uh, Infi uh, acquisition. Um, so talking about MNAs, Jerry, I saw your charts on those. Uh, so one of the things we are ensuring that we invest in that particular initiative, or before that, we had marketing and branding initiatives. Uh, so those are key uh, investment uh, portfolios for us. Now, uh, engineering is our bread and butter. Uh, and uh, one of the things we wanted to ensure that our engineers have uh, you know, enough tools and enough technologies and uh, great connectivity. Uh, now, uh, as, as, as the shift happened to work from home, uh, pretty much for the whole company, uh, the engineers in our case, uh, they have uh, on-prem labs so, so that was kind of a challenging environment for us. How do we ensure um, we, we, we give them the access and the connectivity for those? The other area which became very interesting was uh, this uh, cybersecurity. As employees uh, shifted working from home, uh, so one of the things for us was to enhance our uh, security uh, posture. And, and very recently, as things have started to become business as usual, so to speak, although it's not normally <laughs> as it used to be. Um, and I know you refer to some of these kind of things. So we, we, we are now focused a lot in terms of how do we carefully uh, and, uh, make investments which are ROI based in some of these uh, automation initiatives, uh, uh, digitalization. Um, so we have been investing in some of these uh, technologies uh, like chatbot platforms or robotic process automations. Uh, so, so those are some of the shifts we made, uh, but underlying theme remains the same, which is uh, from an IT perspective, we have to ensure that we are providing services at scale, uh, at speed, and uh, obviously at the low cost. So that goes without saying. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thanks very much. And I think a bit later, we'll loop back uh, uh, maybe some questions about how, uh, what the impact on the en engineering uh, activity had been. But for now, I want to I wanna move to Ron, um, Ron Abreu at SWM. Um, the, uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure where you fit on the vertical industry spe uh, spectrum. It's a very diverse business that you, that you have. Um, but in terms of your approach to delivering um, better business outcomes, given the circumstances, um, you know, uh, through digital technologies, how did that uh, thought process go over the over the past uh, year or so? Yeah. Thank you, Jerry. Um, yeah. SWM is a is a diverse company in plastics and paper. As Jerry mentioned originally, we can be traced back for hundreds of years. Um, 
specifically in the paper industry and so on. We uh, also have been a growth acquisition company for this uh, last decade. And uh, just this year alone, we, we completed two acquisitions. In, in that, our, our shift in thinking because of COVID has been how do we best integrate, communicate with, uh, with our different uh, sites and our different uh, development and manufacturing organization um, while still being under the restrictions of travel and uh, some more of the personal. For, so I can give you some examples in those areas. We have heavily focused on uh, tools such as augmented reality in order to give us the ability to communicate better with our, um, from site to site, our engineers. As we have moved production lines from one location to another location, uh, instead of sending engineers with those lines for the configuration and setup, we actually created augmented reality-based training using uh, some augmented reality tools and partners uh, in the market, uh, using Microsoft's HoloLens glasses, augmented reality smart glasses uh, for remote assistance. We can guide them and see what they're doing as they're configuring uh, this, these new lines and the new plants. And, uh, and we're focused more of a collaborative, I think I'd hear mentioned uh, about collaboration. Collaboration in addition with security has been a big focus for us as we're now into the realm of uh, supporting a lot of people working from home, working on their personal networks, even on some personal devices and things of that nature. So our focus has been over the past year, how do we best communicate and collaborate and how do without uh, with while reducing the risk of travel and uh, and still doing our social distancing and and um, and uh, and still moving forward on our initiatives, that's one area. And a second area is specifically on our uh, integration efforts as we continue to integrate our lines with our uh, with our ERP systems. Uh, we have embraced uh, analytics, operational analytics, in order to give us some more, uh, some more data and feedback on how to best, how to best move forward. Operational excellence um, in automation, a lot of the automation of the front line and uh, data uh, elicitation process. Great. The, um, <clears throat> uh, in, in just quickly, uh, before we maybe get some other ideas about um, investment strategies and how to think about it, um, what what were there um, anything that as you focused on the things you mentioned, were there any trade offs that that you uh, that you perhaps uh, had to put to the side or, or, or postpone or, or anything like that? Right, a lot of um, we've uh, as you can imagine, a lot of going into new manufacturing 4.0 and augmented reality is very network uh, specific, and yeah. that requires a lot of infrastructure, uh, specifically, um, and be able to connect all these devices and, and have the quality to be able uh, for all of our communications and collaborations and, and whatnot. That um, we had to ramp up. Uh, quickly, the infrastructure upgrade and infrastructure uh, capabilities in order to provide these, you know, um, augmented reality, smart glasses all over the sh shop floor, floor. So no matter where you go with these smart glasses, we have uh, accessibility. Yeah. Okay. Super. Just to the other panel members before we move to the next discussion about about technologies going forward and and how to think of our priorities there. Um, any other comments on, 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 this, on this area before we move forward? Yeah, so Jerry Padmal here from Tata yeah. Communications. So Adir and Ron, I, I would love to know how much of some of the changes that you have or some of these initiatives that you've deployed in the last three, three months, six months time frame post COVID or, or during the post pandemic, um, how much of it was in your roadmap before this and how much of a course correction have you taken since through this pandemic situation? So uh, maybe I can uh, respond first. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, um, at Marvel, we had this transformational roadmap defined like three, four years ago. I joined Marvel about four years ago. 
so I would say uh, most of it was already on the roadmap, um, and we had been investing according to a certain schedule. Uh, obviously, you can't do things, uh, you know, everything in a day. <laughs> Uh, but I would say some of the adjustments we had to do were we had to accelerate uh, some some rollout. For example, like I mentioned earlier, we rolled out this uh, chat flat, uh, uh, platform, which we intend to make as our collaboration hub. Uh, the other adjustment we had to do was as we shifted to work from home, uh, we wanted to ensure that um, you know the the connectivity from home uh, where internet was uh, was uh, was good. Uh, and, and performance was of you know, highest grade. So there were certain sites we had to go and upgrade our network bandwidth. And then um, one of the other initiatives we got into was, um, you know, how do we, um, how do we do a lot more automation? So one of the things, again, we accelerated, I uh, mentioned that earlier, was this robotic process automation initiative for us, which, um, which uh, is turning out to be pretty pretty uh, good for us. So I, I think those are the key ones, at least for us. Right. I can uh, I can also echo what Ed here just said because uh, we also accelerate our RPA opportunities and try to automate some of the more mundane tasks, even some tasks that required uh, being local at the offices and things of that nature, uh, in order to free up our people as their home. In order, and, and let them uh, focus more on, on the more value-added processes and, and activities. Um, we originally had the manufacturing um, 4.0 roadmap in our, uh, in our strategy. Um, we, one area that we definitely had to accelerate quickly was more of the augmented reality piece, uh, Pathma, because once again, to, to eliminate and reduce the travel and, the, and because of some of these travel, and we're global, a uh, company with international locations, um, and we just didn't have that ability. So the acceleration was on the acquiring and adopting these new technologies, the smart glasses and, and whatnot with uh, remote capabilities in order to do collaboration around the world with our engineering group. Yeah, one of the thing I'll add is just that this has been a tale of two cities. So I think everybody's talked about the acceleration of the digital transformation. You know, I think uh, Microsoft said that three years of digital trans transformation was, happened in three months after COVID. Mm -hmm. And what we see though, it's been very uneven. And there was a question I saw about small and medium enterprises. You know, frankly, most businesses have suffered on that side. And whereas the places where automation and security and data center infrastructure, the investments that have been happening have been more on the cloud and public cloud area. Now, I think that once we go back to work, things may change there a little bit. And we'll see some of that enterprise investment pick up, but there were a lot of programs that were there that were you know, robotics or things that just leaned in heavily and they really benefited a certain group of customers at the expense potentially of another group of uh, businesses. I think we'll see it normalize, but I think everybody is going to move in that broader direction of automation and analytics and uh, AI. I think that's the broad picture. Some people were ahead. They had programs that were just dramatically accelerated as a result. Yeah, and let me just add to uh, to Kevin's point about the unevenness of the of the approach. You know, unlike forward-thinking organizations uh, like Marvell and SWM that Ed here and Ron described, um, we see too many companies that still view IT as a cost center and something to be minimized when times are tough. Instead of viewing technology as the best approach to saving money across all their functions using advanced automation, some of the other things that we were talking about. Um, and, uh, and, and also being able to serve customers uh, more effectively. So we saw it was only you know, 20, 30% of companies in the data that Jerry showed that were um, increasing their spending on some of these advanced areas like AI, ML. And um, you know, that, that only works though, if, if companies are confident that their technology skills are effective and agile, that's the only way they can really be confident in investing in them, in a, in a, especially in the downturn. Uh, and we wrote a book this year called Doing Agile Right that, uh, that talks about how companies can, uh, can do that. And I hope 
I uh, have a bit of time to say more about that later. Okay. Just quick uh, follow up, Steve. Though, um, the uh, do you, do you expect that that uh, that the the IT function or the technology function within businesses uh, has has gone up in the estimation of the of of the business leaders uh, because of how uh, the, because of the performance and the dependency that, that, that was so obvious uh, this year? Do you think that, that that will be a positive result out of what, what, what's happened in, in some ways? Yeah. I, I, think, I think the story is, is, about, is a bit mixed in two ways. First of all, some companies actually um, did a lot better than others in being able to respond to the, yeah. the changing needs. So uh, we hear a lot of success stories, but uh, a lot of companies actually have not done that well job in helping their, their, their uh, employees work remotely or responding to their, uh, their customer needs, uh, shifting to online channels and, and so forth. It, it, has been, it has been quite mixed. And then we've also seen that even though um, a lot of companies have increased or maintained their technology spending, a lot of that has been just more tactical spending around uh, enabling remote work or increasing transaction capacity for digital transactions, but hasn't been the more strategic improvements of, of helping their, their customers deal better with, with changing circumstances. And again, that's because there's just quite a bit of, of, uh, of a mixed bag in terms of how effective companies are in, in executing technology change. And that's 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 what we hope uh, we hope companies can uh, can improve if they if they focus on that skill. Yeah. Great, thanks. So, Pathmal, um, let's go over to you and, and talk a bit about the technology priorities. We've already sort of swung in that direction with this conversation, which is which is great and fine. I kind of expect that we we would, but in in your position, you know, at, at Tata Communications, what have you seen? Um, <clears throat> About about um, the uh, how your customers' technology priorities have, have had, how the decision making has been done and and what those priorities um, were. Yeah, thank you, Jerry, and and Steve, Adir, Kevin, Ron. I mean, uh, all of your input uh, was very valid. It's something that I hear many a times uh, when I meet uh, clients, and so I'm I'm probably the only one on this panel other than Jerry who's not a CIO. Um, I, um, Tata Communications is a global digital ecosystem enabler. And uh, so we serve uh, our clientele is the CIO of enterprise uh, customers. And um, what we saw in the, during this pandemic period is uh, three phases the customers went through. One was the React. So when this happened back in April, May timeframe, it was more React. Uh, and then the recovery phase, and then the restore phase. And I, I would characterize where we are at right now is more on the recovery uh, restore space. Um, and, and it's now contemplating as to what that post pandemic world gonna look like. And I think we have a good idea as to where this is, this is evolving. And, um, Ron, Adir, you talked about, uh, and also Kevin alluded to talk about um, automation, AI, ML, um, all those technologies coming to the forefront. The, the good news is in all of your roadmaps, pre-pandemic, you had all this. You all, all planned for this is what's gonna happen. This is another year down the road, three years down the road, whatever that time frame. every one of the CIOs I talked as part of their digital transformation, 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, or whatever the phase they were in, they had building these platforms, building these applications, moving to the cloud, um, and then evolving into uh, automating uh, the adoption of the workflows, improving the app and capabilities, security, uh, all of that you had in the roadmaps. I think in all of your comments, one word that resonated was the acceleration. Now all of us are accelerating the roadmaps and, and obviously there's always course correction that's required, but that's something that I see at this stage, what's top of mind on every CEO is, CIO is, IT is, Steve, to your point, IT is no longer a cost center. Any, if anybody thought that IT was a cost center, it was a wake up call. Uh, for those uh, back in April, May timeframe when this pandemic was uh, hit and they were quote unprepared. 
but IT is no longer a cost center. It's an investment to drive that business continuity to serve the three clientele that you NEC are yourselves. One is the customers, the others are the employees, the third is the supply chain partners. So, and to, and to serve them, a lot of SaaS applications are required. Um, and then all those workflows needs to be moved to the cloud. And, and I'm pretty sure all three of you have gone through some of the challenges that any CIO goes through, right? Long lead times on provisioning, uh, numerous change requests, uh, poor network and app performance, um, high cost of uh, inefficient use of capacity, security risks, uh, especially with the many of the end users are being out there. And now we have to look for new innovative solutions to, to address this as we leverage more and more and more cloud uh, internet and then mobility. And, uh, and that's where I see in many of my conversations and I would love to hear your views on this is um, the secure connected digital experience. And that experience can be your employees, they can be your customers, um, or it can be your supply chain partners to drive that, that, that business continuity. And what we see, observe is, it becomes, and I think um, Adil, you talked about this, less and less human interaction. It's a contactless experience. The collaboration has deepened, and I would, I would, I would almost say that it has increased. When I look at my day-to-day, personal life, how I spend my work time, the collaboration has deepened, but it's contactless. And um, so I think that's, that's the challenge for us is what are the solutions? What are, how are we gonna drive the innovation uh, a year down the road, six months down the road, uh, a year down the road or into the future on how we adapt our roadmaps to provide that uh, that, that secure digital experience. And that's where this AI, automation, IoT, uh, these technologies come into play. And, and you will find, you will increasingly need to partner with companies um, that are willing to co-create with you, co-develop with you, um, experiment with you um, in, in adopting these new technologies and partners who are willing to drive that innovation through developing that ecosystem to serve your requirements. Um, so I think that's something uh, uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to hear your views uh, and, and back to you, Jerry. Okay, Thank, thanks very much. All, all good, 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 uh, good insights there. Um, Steve, j- just quick back to you for a second before we move, move, move on. But, uh, you know, th- this is, um, you know, the, the, the topic for the day here is achieving growth through adversity. So, um, you know, what, what are your thoughts on, on, on that concept and how, how best to manage tech investments to, 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 to actually, to actually um, head in that direction? Um, yeah. what, what, are your, uh, what are your thoughts there? What, what I've seen uh, over the years is that, uh, you know, to your question, companies just spend way too much time and energy trying to predict the unpredictable and then building highly detailed plans around those unreliable predictions. Uh, so when you know, a pandemic hits or um, uh, social unrest or a recession or just anything else that throws those plans awry, um, uh, many companies have a very difficult time adjusting their investments. You know, a far better approach is to create an agile technology capability uh, that's able to rapidly pivot based on any kind of external shock or, uh, or um, any change in, in customer needs. So you know, that's really the, the, the focus um, that, that, we, uh, that we spend time on because um, any, any uh, upfront plan uh, is, is going to need to be uh, changed and being able to change that quickly and rapidly is going to be far more effective than, than the perfect plan. Yeah, I think uh, companies the world over have, have rethought business continuity in a strategic sense. And obviously the technology decision making like you, like you described it play, play, plays into that. Any other comments on, on this before we, we move on? I have a 
question for Kevin, but uh, any other comments before we move on? Okay, um, great. So thinking about the impact of what, what we've all been through and are, and are going through, a lot of the, you know, really at the outset, it was sort of like, hey, what, what about, that's ha what about the, the, the decisions and the investments that are making now um, on an emergency basis um, will actually become permanent? Um, what are the things that'll, uh, technological or otherwise, what shifts have become permanent? And, and Kevin, I'll throw that question, question to you, but I'd like to hear from others as well. But I'll start with you, Kevin. Yeah, I think we're in the middle of Schumpeter's gale of creative destruction. And so <laughs> that's an economic theory that really resonates right now where businesses are being destroyed and new businesses and new capabilities are rising. Um, it's really, really important that businesses understand this. And the AI is central where, where we're involved with to these transformations. So every enterprise will become an AI business um, because those that don't will fail in this environment. And so things that were talked about like analytics, robotics, 5G, IoT, this whole notion of a secure private cloud, you know, really all the data center investments that are happening on networking and security and automation, those are here to stay. Everybody had those in place, at least some sort of planning and whether that was over a year or two years or five years, all of that has been accelerated and will stay. And so it's really critical that businesses to succeed need to embrace this and accelerate this. I think the other thing that will remain uh, is that people have realized that we don't need to travel 300,000 miles a year, okay? And to do our business. So I think working from home and remote collaboration will persist at some level, at some moderated level. And so one of the things that we've seen people lean in on is uh, some of the platforms that we offer, AI platforms, where it creates a virtual world where people can actually work remotely on planes or cars or buildings. And we have this Omniverse, which is a real world that's involved with across many, many industries where people are actually able to collaborate. It turns out that's useful whether you're in the office or you're at home, but it's just gotten accelerated because you don't have the ability to actually, you know, people are building a car before they can finally see, oh, I wish we'd done things this way slightly differently. We can do that now in a virtual world. I think the other thing that will surely persist is what we're doing now. So as remote working uh, and video conferencing and the, the collaboration that that enables and the ability to communicate, um, sometimes it's pretty good, uh, but surprisingly too often it sucks in terms of the quality of the video and the quality of the audio. And again, I think there's things that are happening in that space with AI being used for compression uh, to dramatically improve the video quality, to create things that simply can't exist without it. You know, instead of having a bunch of us in boxes, we can be in a virtual world together now. Um, RTX Voice, we were talking before the, the call started, we all have puppies and we're all worried that our dogs are gonna start barking. You know, there's technologies now that can make your voice clearer and cancel, uh, whether it's kids playing in the background on the piano or dogs barking. So I think all of these technologies will persist. So we're in the middle of Schumpeter's Gale where there's businesses, traditional businesses, which are really transforming. And if they don't, they're gonna be destroyed, but there's also just incredible new opportunities. So it's creative destruction uh, and we need to embrace all of this transformation in AI to benefit. Yeah, great, great points. And it's also interesting, a lot of discussion about uh, something becoming permanent, this, this idea of remote, um, this is supporting remote work, uh, remote collaboration, all, all of these things are gonna uh, leap forward uh, tremendously. What does that mean to sort of urban, urban landscapes and settings and planning and, uh, you know, office buildings and, and, and all that? It's, um, it, it, it could be quite, quite traumatic. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it plans out and how fast the, the technology enables that. Um, the, um, um, Ron or, or Ed here, any, any comments or thoughts or uh, advice about what you think will be permanent going forward out of your experiences this past past few months? 
Yeah, I think uh, Kevin hit the key points there all, <clears throat> already. Uh, so as you also said, so it's going to be very interesting how the business real estate uh, changes um, with the flexible work from home scenarios. Um, so there are going to be some IT solutions and investments in order uh, to uh, enable that from the standpoint of you know various health protocols, or safety protocols, or whoever is in the in the facilities or buildings, how how to ensure the collaboration and so forth. So I think that's going to be an industry, uh, interesting area. The other other key shift that uh, results from this is actually uh, good for us because. Now uh, that could impact uh, how uh, you know, uh, people get hired. Uh, you know, so people are not going to be tied to any particular site, location, or country. It's, it's uh, uh, hiring and you know, uh, hiring support staff is going to be pretty flexible. Anybody could work from anywhere, so that's that's great. So that that gives a that gives a very wide and deep uh, access to the uh, global talent. And. Uh, I, I totally agree. I think some of these uh, disruptive technologies like AI, ML, um, they are they're here now. Uh, so we are very keenly awaiting for you know the the use cases and the solutions and platforms that that uh, work in the enterprise. And I know Kevin could speak a lot on that topic. Uh, but and 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 we are seeing some of the solutions already in the market. Uh, but I, I think that that industry is going to get more and more mature. And, and lastly, the cybersecurity is going to stay uh, with us forever. <laughs> um, so that's that's one area where we are always keenly interested in, you know, to protect. Uh, I'm sure everybody is. Uh, how do we protect our information assets and so forth? So I think I think we're going to see more and more uh, challenges in that area, and then uh, uh, companies have to get uh, more and more better in protecting. Yeah, in addition, I think the proliferation of our communications network is going to continue. Um, as we look at different ways of using SD-LAN, uh, 5G, other ways of connectivity and embracing our, you know, our cloud structure that we have today to give everyone accessibility, that's going to grow. Um, and I think uh, our network and our architecture, uh, enterprise architecture, uh, will be, has changed and the way we approach it, I think that will continue in the next in the next few years. Yeah, and also yeah. I also want to uh, uh, um, talk about uh, Steve. Steve mentioned in uh, this point, and this is a great one: is that this whole concept of agility, right? So I know many companies have been uh, going to the cloud, and that's kind of an old news now. Um, like everybody else, we have done a lot of shift to the cloud. Uh, so, so this whole concept of uh, you know, keep your IT landscape simple, straightforward, scalable, agile—that's that's that's very very important. In fact, that goes a uh, that goes long ways in terms of uh, handling any future challenges, because then that enables you to uh, shift very very quickly. Uh, I think that's a very key concept. So, in, in fact, for us. Um, I know since we have, I mean, we have we have moved quite a bit of workload to the cloud. There's still left behind. So I'm, I'm envisioning in the next couple of years. I don't want any hardware on-prem. So our people, uh, from an IT standpoint, will be doing everything via software. You know, whether it is a firewall or whether it is a router or whether, I mean, there will there'll be a few things still on-prem, I guess, but mostly they'll become uh, software managed. So I think that's the exciting world we're headed into. Yeah, I mean, building on, on Adir's point about the need for flexible, agile technology architecture, companies have an equal need for a, an agile operating model or, or, or business system. And that's another change that has been forced upon companies during the pandemic that many are trying to hold on to. I, I, I had a, a CEO at a healthcare company recently tell me that, uh, that they, may, they make more decisions in a day right now than they made in a quarter. Um, before the uh, the downturn, and they want to figure out how to maintain that agility and speed in decision making uh, after the uh, after the, the you know the pandemic, and you know doing things like moving from annual budgeting to, to quarterly, or even even more quickly, or empowering the front line to make decisions, or uh, what we often call stop 
uh, start stopping faster? How do we shut down projects that are no longer relevant or aren't getting the, the, uh, the benefit that, that, that we thought? So the, the, those are big changes that companies have kind of been forced into finding a way to do right now, but uh, they'll be more effective if they can, can carry that on uh, you know, into more normal times. Great. All right. Well, you know, it's time to, to wrap up. So maybe some quick uh, closing closing thoughts. The, um, uh, you know, the, again, the, the mission here is achieving growth through adversity. Pathmal, why don't we uh, uh, start with you? Any closing um, uh, thoughts or things you'd like to impart to the, to the, to the group on, uh, on what we've discussed? No, I think uh, the, the, the underlying, the, the key messages I heard that is very consistent across the board is the, that agility to drive the acceleration and adoption of next generation innovative technology. Kevin talked about artificial intelligence and, um, and I see that we are adopting AI into many areas in our portfolio. But Kevin talked about noise cancellation on a, on a UC collaboration uh, experience. Um, you know, on security, how do you stop a DDoS attacks and how do you learn from the, uh, the, the, the past use cases and, and, and apply AI to avoid that going forward and, and automate that as much as possible to drive that end user security experience. Um, Steve uh, Adir, you talked about the moving applications to the cloud, and 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 Adir, you said two years down the road you won't have any hardware or minimal hardware in, in your new environment. How do we, as a service provider, serve your requirements in automating all those workflows going to the cloud, improving that edge computing uh, capabilities uh, in a in a secure way, and how do we apply AI ML? Into, into those scenarios. Um, so I'm really pleased to hear that, um, and it confirms what I said earlier about the restore phase. All of you are thinking along those lines and Steve, uh, for us the agility means learning by doing and we, we adopt new use cases and, and then very quickly productize those solutions into, into our offering. So, so those use, use cases can be generally available to many customers. And um, so that agility applies entire food chain, not just at your level, at your environments, but also uh, in, into the entire industry. So very, very consistent feedback and, and great to hear that we are all on the same path, same journey ahead on the digital transformation and accelerating the digital transformation. Thanks, Padma. Kevin, any, any final um, thoughts? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I said we're in the middle of Schumpeter's Gale of creative destruction. Kind of the bad news there is that destruction is easier and faster. Uh, but the good news is that the creation of all of these new capabilities, and specifically I refer to AI, I think a lot of companies think that they're too late. And in fact, we're right at the beginning of this transformation. And the key there is that you can't focus on the infrastructure of just providing connectivity at the IT level. The IT folks and CIOs need to become partners with the business line managers to actually do this creation. And a company, you know, we've got a paper company here. I guarantee there's an incredible amount that can be done in these areas that SWN and Ron knows better than anyone else. So the, the point here is that every single business has the potential to become an AI accelerated computing business. And it's not late, it's actually early to apply the innovations of each of those businesses and make these transformations happen. So we obviously love this. Uh, that's what our bread and butter is. We're really addressing many different needs across many verticals, but we can't do it alone. I mean, we provide the accelerated computing platform, but really it's about involving business expertise, which is unique, whether it's healthcare or whether it's automotive or 5G or telco, whatever it might be, all of those businesses need to accelerate now into the creation phase because the destruction phase happened easily and quickly. Uh, the creation phase were right at the beginning and we're excited about it. Thanks, Kevin. Steve, any final comment? 
Uh, yeah, I'll just quickly uh, you know, recap a, a few key points. First is that um, technology shouldn't be viewed as a, a cost to be minimized, but one the companies can uh, invest in to help them grow and to better meet their customers' needs and be more efficient and effective in how they operate. Um, second is, is uh, spend less time predicting the unpredictable and more time being able to respond rapidly to changing conditions and customer needs. And, uh, and third point is that agile done right is the best way to innovate and to create an adaptable organization. And, and as, as, as Kevin said, the, the technology and business partnership is a really critical uh, part of that. Great, thanks, Steve. Ad here, any final thoughts for the, for the group? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I, I totally agree. I mean, you, you can't predict everything. Uh, so I, I, I think what really helps is uh, stick to the basics. And one of the basics is keep looking for the change patterns and then keep shifting your or updating your models accordingly. So, um, and that, 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 that generally helps. So, and I also agree with uh, that in, in this uh, world going forward, one of the things we, we need to do is ensure that we provide a very uh, secure and the best possible user experience for our, for our employees. I think that, that that's, that's a key thing because there are a lot of technology, right? There's chatbot platform, there is, you know, this thing, that thing, but at the end of the day, all these things need to tie together and provide a seamless, uh, beautiful experience for the employees in a secure fashion. So I think I think that's very, very important. Sure. The other, other one would be, I totally agree, and Kevin has very eloquently described the AI, ML, and I, I look forward to, to companies like NVIDIA in those kind of technologies. But I think the key thing is, like I said, look, look for those patterns that are changing out and then figure out, uh, because it, it's not just about bringing a technology in, it, it's, it's how do you use that particular technology to reshape or reimagine or rescale or update your operating models for the profitable growth of a business. I mean, that's that's how this gets applied. That's that's my final okay. comment. Thanks, Adhir. Finally, Ron, any final comments for the group? Yeah, I think uh, I think for the most part, the group has said it best. Uh, I do want to uh, chime in on what Kevin said. IT for us, we have our transformations about becoming a business partner. Uh, it's to influence and to help the business find where the value is, not the solution. Uh, everyone, in a lot of cases, we always go straight to a solution without understanding what's the value to get there that we, we uh, plan to achieve from that. Uh, it's not about gathering data. It's about making the data actually valuable uh, and useful. And for us, we our transformation is about change management. It's to be able to be at the forefront uh, with the business and always be a part of every business decision in order to help them in partnering with that. And that, and that is one of the transformation pieces that, that has been happening at SWM for the last uh, uh, year or two. Uh, I think that's going to be a big, uh, a big piece of our strategy going forward and how we can drive value within the organization. Super. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we'll wrap up now, but uh, many thanks to Steve, Adhir, Kevin, Ron, Pathmol. Uh, much appreciated. Fantastic comments and insights.